Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He who was and is and is to come. He is great and greatly to be praised. He is our Abba Father. And he reigns. He reigns supreme. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Our God reigns. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. The heavens and the earth adores him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Our God, our Lord, our Savior, and our King. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Great is the faithfulness of our great and sovereign God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. The heavens and the earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. 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 Oh, he is our King. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. To the glory, hallelujah, of Jehovah God Almighty the Father. Our Savior and soon coming King is Jesus. He rules everything. He is God all by himself. Great is the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to the glorious, wonderful, sovereign God. The one who died on the cross for us. The one who, hallelujah, took the loss for us. The one who healed us. The one who delivered us. The one who set us free and made us whole. Hallelujah. He is God all by himself. He is loving and kind. He is wonderful and true. He is there on every occasion and in every situation for me and you. God is a good God. Yes, he is. He is a good God. He is not good because of us. He is good even when we make a fuss. When we kick up ruckus. Hallelujah. God is still good to us. What a God, what a God, what a mighty God. There is none of us that can say that we are so good, that we are, hallelujah, deserving of what God has done. But he comes through for us no matter what. He fights for us even when we are not able to fight for ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. He fights for us even when we have given up and said we don't want to fight anymore. He continues to be God in our lives, for our lives, and to our lives. What an awesome God. Hallelujah. One songwriter says, My God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Come on, I want you to just tell him, Lord, I know you are awesome. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, with power, and with love. Our God is an awesome God. You know, as we think this morning, as our brain gets clear and our eyes lose its fogginess, our body gets coordination, and we begin to, to, to move around and to, to, to begin to think clearly and to begin to breathe and smell the oxygen in the atmosphere. There's so many things that we could focus on and saying, I wish this was better. I want this to change. 
I hope today is better than yesterday. I hope that today I can do some stuff. I can get some stuff. I can be better today. And there's so many things that we are just wanting to see change and wanting to see different and wanting to, to, to just be able to benefit from, to experience a joy, experience a happiness that we have not experienced or seen before. But I'm here to tell you this morning that the fact that we, that, that we are alive, the fact that we have woken up, the fact that we're able to speak, to look and to see, to smell. There's some people who don't have any sense of smell. There's some people who cannot hear. They have to use hearing aid or they're completely deaf. They have to get sign language because they can't hear what's going on. There's some people who are blind. They cannot see. I can see on the screen. I can see names going up. I can see people joining. Hallelujah. I can see. I should be appreciative of that which God has not allowed Satan to take from me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so we can focus on the things that we would want to see better. We can focus on the things that Satan has taken. Hallelujah. David spent maybe hours, maybe days crying when he came to Ziklag and saw that all that he had and all that his soldiers had was stolen. Hallelujah. Everything was gone. No more to be seen. And in his natural, he only focused on that. He couldn't see the fact that he was still alive after coming back from wars, many wars. He couldn't see the fact that, yeah, I've lost some stuff, but look how much I have gained. He couldn't see, and I'm not, I'm not knocking David. I'm not saying that if we're in that situation, we should be, we should be excited and we should be celebrating. I'm just pointing out a fact that it was, that was the only focus that David had at that time. The focus on what he had lost. So many times our only focus in what is in what we have lost. Sometimes we lose a loved one. We lose a, a, a mom, a grandma. I know of persons who, and this is, please, I don't get it twisted. Don't get it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being heartless or cold or, or unfeeling or uncaring or unempathetic. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying to you, I know persons, even today, who have lost a loved one, a mom, a dad, a grandma, years ago, sometimes eight years, ten years ago, and each time Mother's Day come around or birthday or their, their, their loved one's birthday comes around, they go into a funk. They go into a state like David was in when he came to Ziklag and saw that everything that he owned, everything that he had, everyone that he loved was gone. They go into that funk in the same way. And we don't learn sometimes from what we saw. David spent maybe hours. Let's just let me not assume that it was days. He spent hours crying. The Bible said that he and his men, these mighty warriors, cried until they had no more tears. They cried, they cried, they cried. And we must learn from these kinds of things to say, if God is with us, who can be against us? What does that mean? When the Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. David acknowledged his ways first. He, he acquiesced or submitted to his pain first. He submitted to his loss first. He went to his soul for, the, for, for a response first instead of the one who can direct his path and so he cried and cried remember i'm not knocking david i'm trying to uplift us come on i'm starting with god's encouragement to us this morning that says don't look to the things that you don't have first don't look to the things you have lost first don't look to the things that the, that, that that is not in your life currently don't look to the things that could have been better look to the things that is and the things that will be better look to him who is the author and finisher of our faith and i'm talking to myself and i hope that if you feel that this is a good counsel if i'm if i'm counseling myself and you're overhearing and it sounds like good counsel 
maybe you should try to take it too because if David had gone to God in the first instance if when David saw that everything was locked was lost that his camp was raided that the people his wife and children and concubines were taken if David had saw had looked and saw that his tent hallelujah was gone and, and and everything was gone and all of his wealth or everything that he had in the natural was gone and he says god i went out to battle on your behalf i went to fight for your behalf what happened what happened here lord guide me in what i should do and where i should go he would have recovered everything much earlier than he did he would have saved himself from looking like a wimp crying when he's a mighty warrior and so there are sometimes come on I'm talking to somebody this morning you need to hear this I'm saying to you there are times when we are distressed and depressed come on and downcast from things that only God can change only God can heal your heart when you have lost a loved one Mourning is okay. Jesus mourned at the grave side of Lazarus. The Bible said Jesus wept. But in the moment he gave, he paid homage to a friend. But I don't believe, I don't believe, the Bible doesn't explicitly state it, but I don't believe Jesus was weeping because Lazarus had died. I believe he was weeping because of the faithlessness of the people around because the people around didn't know whose presence they were in. The people around didn't know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The people didn't know that he is the resurrection and the life. The people didn't know that he can do all things. Hallelujah. The people didn't know who he was and what he was able to do. And because they didn't know, he wept. He wept. Jesus knew he could raise Lazarus. Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus. So he could not have been weeping for Lazarus' death. Because we weep over something that is lost and cannot be regained. So he could not have been weeping over Lazarus. He was weeping at the faithlessness. And Jesus today is still weeping. He's weeping over his church. He's weeping over the people in his kingdom. He's weeping because we are still faithless today we are still unbelieving today as they were as people ever was we are still as faithless and unbelieving we're still focusing on the negatives rather than the positives that is still our culture even today we're still saying if you be god why are these things happening to me I see it all the time on social media, people talking about if God is real and he's loving and kind as, as, as Christians say that he is, why isn't he intervening in the world things? Why isn't he stopping the Palestinians from being slaughtered? Why didn't he stop October 7th from happening where the Jews were slaughtered? Thousands of them. Why didn't he stop it? Why doesn't he stop little boys and little girls from being raped and kidnapped and sold into slave trade? Why doesn't he stop these things if he's so loving and kind? Hallelujah. But you know what? I tell you this. Because the heart of man is so evil, if God were to stop the evil that men are doing now, we would find another way to blame him. Because the only thing can stop men from being evil is death. Oh, you didn't hear that. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. The only thing that can stop men from being evil is death. Death. And therefore, in order to stop a Vladimir Putin from killing the people in Ukraine, God would have to kill him. In order to stop the pedophiles, the rapists, the slave traders, the mass shooters come on the evil people who are passing legislations that are causing children to be to be victimized that are causing people to suffer he would have to kill them but that in itself doesn't work because we see in the old testament where god killed thousands of israelis of jews 
with a with a hope that they would get it with a hope that they would realize that if they mess with him death was their outcome and yet still they still did evil they still made golden calves they still worshipped at the altar of sexual immorality and lying and murmuring and complaining even though death was imminent for those who took that route and so the heart of man is evil to the point where only if they actually die only if they actually die not seeing someone else die because the evil in our hearts will always say to us yeah that person died but you won't so continue to do evil so only the person who has literally died will not be the one that purports evil on other people anymore and so if god was to kill all the people that were doing evil things where would it stop because the heart of man is deceitful about above all else and desperately wicked and so god would have to kill almost every single man in the same way that he did through the flood and see he killed off the entire world except for eight people because he had to leave eight for a new beginning and so he left eight for a new beginning after the flood and yet still here we are today replenished earth replenished mankind replenished evil so let us be mindful and careful about how we think and some people don't get involved in the ignorance the dunce mindset and post thought processes that talk about if god was that this good god and if god this and god that god has intervened on many occasions in the past the bible is littered with god's intervention to bring correction god has even caused man to come back from the dead through resurrection and man still was evil when lazarus was brought back to life instead of celebrating hallelujah some people who call themselves people of god were still plotting not just to kill jesus now but lazarus as well come on you know your bible it's right there the pharisees were plotting to kill lazarus again because they said that just seeing lazarus around was causing people to turn to god and so i'm telling you people of god do not get caught up do not get swept up in the emotion of people saying man i'm telling you why 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 would not good god protect these children i was there i cried to god on many occasions i said god what is happening who who defends the defenseless who defends the women who cannot manage the men who are kidnapping them and raping them who defends the children the boys and the girls who are being drawn into 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 confusion who are being told that they can be something else i heard a, a, a thing i don't know if it is true so please don't hold me accountable for it but i i, I heard it in a serious way um that there was a little boy who in the midst of all the confusion i'm not gonna state which country he was from but there's a little boy who um in the whole confusion and 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 and, and, and context of everybody getting to be what they want to be how can you trust even adults to do want to be what they want to be when their heart is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked how much more foolish is a child how much more foolish and so this child says that they I, that that he identifies as a cat and they took him he was sick and they took him to the vet and the vet refused to treat him the vet refused to treat him because the vet was not trained to treat humans who think that they're a cat the dread was the, the vet was trained to treat cats who know that they're cats and dogs who know they're dogs and so here is this little boy in this veterinarian office and the doctor is seeing hands and feet and blood and eyes and ears that does not reflect a cat but he has to accept that this is a cat because somebody says so somebody completely insane says that this is a cat and he in his sanity he in his right mind 
have to come in agreement with the insanity and say that this child is a cat. And because he refused to, he was threatened to lose his license. His veterinarian business was threatened to shut down. Now, listen to me carefully. I'm not against anybody doing what they want to do. My Bible tells me that every man has to work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. And it is not the fear of these people that we're living in today. Because we have become so fearful that if someone says, I am a dog, we start barking alongside them. You don't have to bark with them. You don't even have to call them a dog. What you need to do is take away yourself, lest it is contagious. If someone says they are something that you know from visual and from hearing and from speaking that they are not, lest it is contagious, you take away yourself. You do not have to engage. You do not have to call a human a dog. You do not have to call a human a cat or a rat or anything like that. What you need to do is leave the scene, leave that space, ignore that person, go into a different section. Because just in case that insanity is contagious, you don't want to catch it. So I'm just saying to you, stop being afraid, people of God. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid that if you don't speak right, act right, look right according to the, 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 the insanity of man that you will suffer and you will die no you won't God will defend you God will protect you if you have nothing to say that is in line with God's word then say nothing because the Bible in Matthew chapter 12 says that we will be judged for every idle word we speak can I tell you something every Christian that calls something that is not as though it were and not according to God's word but according to man's desire has gone down in the book of life as having sinned can I talk truth if someone says to you I am a dog if someone says to you I am a dog and you come in agreement though you don't see tail like a dog hear like a dog face like a dog it doesn't bark like a dog. You see a human, but you come in agreement with that lie and speak that lie out of your mouth. You have gone down in heaven as a liar. And the devil is the father of all lies. Can I teach this morning? Because God has given me the responsibility to help his people to find a place of purpose. Do not join with the world do not be afraid, so afraid that you join with the world and lose your soul. Listen, I understand that the system is controlled by Lucifer. He sets up things where you can't get a visa, you can't travel, you can't work, you can't do this, you can't do that if you don't agree with them. I'm saying to you, you don't have to agree verbally because what you say is what you shall have. What you say is what you shall be judged by. And so God is saying, if you are in a situation where saying something is going to um, have consequences to you because man wants you to do it, do like Jesus, standing before Pilate, standing before Herod, say nothing. The Bible says when you go before the courts, when you go before the judges, when you go before those who would want to, 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 to steal, to kill and to destroy you, worry not about what you will say, just be there with your mouth ready for what God will say in it and through it. Do not speak out of fear. Do not speak out of trying to exist, trying to, 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 to be a part of what it is that's going on. Because that's not the Christian way. The Christian way is to not speak any evil. To call something that God has made something else what man says it is to be called is going against God is an anti-Christ position and as a child of Christ as a bride of Christ we have no responsibility whatsoever in heaven or in the earth to do anything 
against God. Amen. And so I'm saying to you, ask God for the wisdom to survive in a crazy world. Ask God for the wisdom to survive in an absolutely confused, insane, discombobulated, Sodom and Gomorrah type world. Ask God for the wisdom to exist in these systems of things. Because Satan is going about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's going to and fro, seeking to destroy, to steal and to kill. And so I'm begging you, people of God, don't let fear cause you not to get there. Don't let fear cause you not to get there. Don't let fear with evil you share. Don't let fear with righteousness you, eat, you, you, you compare. Stay away from evil. And if you can't, if you're forced to in a situation say nothing it is better that heaven heaven have you down as not saying anything you don't have to speak against what someone else does you don't have to say these people are crazy you don't have to if if if, if you if you're if if you, you don't have to volunteer to say it is crazy for this child to think that they're a cat if it's not your child if it's your child you have a responsibility to speak on it if it's someone else's child, you have a responsibility to pray on it. Oh, come on, somebody. You got to get that. If it is your child, you have a responsibility to speak on it or speak about it. You have a responsibility to say what God says concerning it. If it is not your child, your only responsibility is to pray on it. Your responsibility is not to go on social media and say, I saw this and I saw that so that you can go viral. What kind of madness is this? How could this happen? How could this parent allow this? How could... You're not an opinion poll. Your, your, your responsibility is to pray. Father, I see what's going on. I see what the enemy is doing. Lord, help in this season. Come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Not in an appearance to judge. But come to fix. Come to heal. Come to deliver. Come to set free. Come to make whole. Father... You said if anything should ever happen, if we should ever do anything to even one of these little ones, may a millstone be tied around our necks and we be cast in the sea. Father, we do not want a millstone around our necks. We do not want to be cast in the sea. Hallelujah. And, and be forgotten. And so God Almighty, we travail for the children. We travail for the confused. We travail for the insane. Lord, let the spirit of insanity come out of the prime ministers, come out of the presidents, come out of the members of parliament who are doing and passing insane laws. Laws against your word. Laws against your will. Laws against your purpose. Father, Carry us in this season. Come to our rescue, Lord. For we do not have the power and the authority to change what Satan and his agents in the various high offices are doing. But you do. For you are the God that changed what happened in, in the Egyptian court. You are the God that made Nebuchadnezzar bow. You are the God that caused that king that had Sarah in his harem. Caused him to wake up the next morning and sent for Abraham. And begged his mercy. Ask him to pray for him. And then blessed him as he went with his wife. You are the God that can do that. You can reach into the White House and touch the President of the United States. You can reach into the palace of the Kremlin and touch the President of Russia. You can reach into, into wherever, into Downing Street and touch the Prime Minister of England, the Prime Minister of France, of Spain, of Italy. You can reach into those places and touch those men and those women, O oh God Almighty. You are able because you have done it before. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, reach into the, the halls, into the bedroom of these mighty men that are doing Satan's bidding in their confusion, in their ignorance, 
reach into the rooms, into the hallways, into the beds and touch them, oh God, like you touched Abimelech. Touch them, Lord Jesus. Touch the Prime Minister of Canada. Touch him, Father, and bring sense, bring consciousness, bring righteousness, holiness, and truth to their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Cause a shift to take place in their thought process. The seed, the chip, come on, that Satan has implanted in them, that causing them to be like robots for evil, robots for confusion, robots for unrighteousness. To just be going like a like 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 a zombie towards unholiness, wickedness, evil. Father, restore them. And those who refuse to be restored, Lord, we know that in your arsenal you have a, you have um, weapons like what you did to, to to Nebuchadnezzar, where you send him out to eat grass for a season, with his nails long like eagle's claws, here growing like a lion. Until he came to his senses. You are able, O oh God, to do great and mighty things, to restore for your people. And so, Lord, we do not cry out against them, we cry out for them. We do not cry out against those who are confused, those who are caught in, in, in great depths of immorality. We cry out for them. We cry out for the world this morning, Lord Jesus. We cry out for the world this morning. We cry out for the world this morning. We cry out for those who believe in false gods. We cry out for those who, who are worshipping inanimate objects. We cry out for those who are worshipping what that which was created. Those who are worshipping cows and dogs. We cry out for them this morning, O God Almighty, in the midst of their ignorance. Let them not be drawn away. Let them not be destroyed. Let them not face eternity because of their confusion. We cry out for them this morning, Lord. The fourth watch family cry out for those who are in pain, those who are insane. Those whose lives are in vain. We cry out for them this morning, Lord Jesus. We as a family, we as your children in one accord, cry out for those who are heading down the wrong road. A road that leads to a cliff that they can never get away from. They will fall over into hell and be destroyed. Father, may they find the right road. Carry them, Lord, in the midst of their confusion. For Satan desires to sift this world like wheat. He desires to populate hell. But this morning we come to you, Lord, as your children. And we say, Father, give us an ear. Give us an ear. Hear our voice this morning. Because you have placed a heart of love in us. Hear our cry this morning, O God Almighty. We're not spending time bawling about the state of, of degradation. The state of disgust. The state of, of, of Sodom and Gomorrah in the modern day. We're crying to you and we're saying, God, help. Help, Father God, help. Help these people that have lost their way. Help these people that who believe that their actions that are anti-Christ, anti-words, anti-your word is the right way to go. Help them, Father. Help them in the name of Jesus Christ. We come in agreement this morning and we ask for your help because without your help, Lord, this world is gone to hell in a basket. Help, Father God. Do what you have done before. Be who you always are. Your Bible tells us that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You change not. You are the same God who knew how to help. Father, I was once lost, but you came for me. I'm asking you to go for Vladimir Putin. Find him. Go for... for, for, for um, former President Donald Trump, go for President Biden, go for, for, for Prime Minister um, Andrew Holness and their families. Find them, Lord. Go for the Prime Minister Barbados, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Martin, St. Vincent, Cayman Islands, Grenada. Go for the Prime Minister and the Presidents of Venezuela, Colombia. Go, O God Almighty, for the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, 
Iran, Oman, all these places. Go for them, Lord Jesus, and shake them that they might know that the choices they are making to fight against you and against your word is the wrong choice. We know they might still choose the way of evil, the way of unrighteousness. They might still choose the way of Satan, but at least they will not be able to stand up and say, all I knew was the way of the Muslim. All I knew was the way of confusion. All I knew was the way of racism, prejudice, wickedness, immorality. That's what I was born in. That's what I was exposed to. And you never sent any help. So how, one, how will you judge me now when I never knew otherwise? Father, we are asking you in the fullness of your mercy, your grace, and your love, visit these people in these various places. Visit northern Nigeria, where these people who think that they worship the right God, the good God, the only God, are murdering other people who have a different view. People who are not even trying to fight them, and they're murdering. How could that be the good God? Visit them, Lord Jesus, and cause a shift to take place. We travail this morning for the world. Every day we get up and we pray for ourselves. We pray for health and strength. We pray for blessings. We pray for outcomes for our own selves and our family. We pray for our thing to be blessed. We pray for our mind, for our hearts to be healed and delivered and set free. Well, this morning we're praying for the others. We're praying for people who, have, who, are, who are lost, people who are confused. We're praying for them, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're praying for those who do not know you. We pray that the spirit of salvation will manifest in every nation without hesitation. We're praying this morning, O Lord Jesus Christ, as a family, for the lost, for you came to save them, them that are lost. I ask that you glorify yourself in every nation and every tongue. Manifest yourself in China. Manifest yourself in the, in the, in the, um, the Middle East. Manifest yourself in the nations of Africa. Manifest yourself in Europe, O God Almighty, where once upon a time crusaders for Christ used to come from. Yes, they were confused and they were wrong in what they were doing, but at least they were confused on behalf of Christ. Now they are completely confused on behalf of Lucifer. Father, bring them to a place of repentance and surrender. We travail for them this morning, O God. We stand in the gap for them that are lost. We do not want to see them dead and we know that this is not what you want as well your word says it is not your will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and so this morning lord we give some time we give some time to those that are confused and lost those that are broken those that are deceived those that are destined for the place of no return the place of no joy, the place of no peace. We cry out to you for them this morning. And Father, I cry out to you personally, personally, for that young lady that took me to church on Sunday, that Uber driver that is a self-proclaimed atheist. I cry out for her this morning. You know her, God. You know where she lives. She says she has a family. She has children. She was pregnant and didn't know the mechanisms that made her able to have children. She's alive. She has hands and feet and she has no clue the mechanism. She has no clue how she was created. She has no clue how her brain works so intricate. She has no clue why her breath is important to her life, yet she cannot see it. Doctors cannot replace breath. She lives by things and a mechanism that she cannot understand and no one can explain to her in the fullness of it. Yet she says she's an atheist. I pray for her in her ignorance, in her insanity. I pray God that you will deliver her from the spirit of insanity. 
and deliver her children from that passing down of a generation of insanity. I pray for her, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask each and every one of you this morning, as the Lord leads, to just pray in your own space. Pray for some people who are lost. Pray for people who you know that should be serving Jesus, but they're serving Satan. Come on, come on, come on. Get in it. Come on, guys. It, it, it's so easy. There is such a big crowd when, we're pray, when you are being prayed for, but not a big crowd when you have to pray for someone. I'm asking you this morning, think about someone else other than yourself today. Begin to speak to situations and circumstances, not from the place of... of, of of, of, of indiscretion, not from the place of prejudice or scorn or condemnation or judgment, but from the place of compassion, the place of love. I want you to just spend about a minute and just pray for some people, whether you know them or not. Pray for your next door neighbor that is not saved. Pray for somebody this morning. Come on, you can do it. You don't have to be an eloquent prayer warrior. You don't have to be someone who knows all the words to say. Just say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on my neighbor. Have mercy on my son have mercy on my daughter have mercy on my auntie my uncle my cousin my niece my nephews have mercy oh god on my mom and dad come on pray mercy pray mercy rako shaparabasando lobondo koroboko shekendele behesiendele come on pray mercy pray mercy pray mercy come on care about somebody other than yourself today in the name of jesus be delivered from selfishness this morning come on glory to god hallelujah pray for someone you don't know pray for the prime minister of canada pray for the prime minister of italy pray for the prime minister pray for the president of the united states hallelujah that he will come to his senses and begin to function as one who has an unction of righteousness holiness and truth on behalf of the nation Come on, pray for the people who are making decisions that are going to impact you one way or another or impact your generation. Pray for somebody else this morning, people of God. It is so easy when you come onto social media and you hear somebody talking. This morning I was looking um, as I was getting ready. I was um, trying to find Facebook and I saw a, a, a man, I'm not sure if he's a pastor or what, but I saw a headline that drew my attention and he was saying, God is going to restore you. God is going to restore what you have lost. God is going to restore your finances. He's going to restore your health. He's going to restore your life right now. In this now season, God's going to restore, restore, restore. And people are saying, Amen, I receive it, I receive it. I I receive it and they're receiving a restoration that they have no clue comes with consequences comes with effort comes with faith comes with love you cannot receive any restoration god has no restoration no blessing no favor for you if you are living wicked if you are living in evil concupiscence if you are living a life of faithlessness of lovelessness you have that that word is not for you it cannot come to pass for you. God does not bless mess. He will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. He will bless you if you walk in love and live by faith. He will preserve you if when he looks in the future, he sees that you are one who will turn to him in the end. But God will not bless you in your mess. He will not bless you as you continue to fail test. And so when you see these things going around where these persons want to have thousands of likes so that they can make money of social media and they're saying, God's going to turn this around for you today. God's going to change your, your, your life. God's going to change your circumstance. God's going to bless you with money. God's going to bless you with that house you've been wanting. God's going to bless you with that car. Listen to me. I don't have to tell you that God's going to bless you. I don't. I just need to tell you that you must trust God, that you must walk in love, live by faith. And God will exceed your expectations. God will do the exceedingly, abundantly above all you could ask, think, or imagine. I cannot tell you what God's going to do because God will do greater than any man can hope, think, ask, or imagine. But he does it for those who are in right alignment, right standing, right mindset with him. 
And so you're living a life of adultery or fornication. You're lying, stealing, you're selfish, you're slothful, you're greedy, you're disgusting, you're a gossiper, a rumor monger. You're living a life that is no way a reflection of the righteousness, holiness, and truth of Jesus Christ. But you call yourself a Christian and some pastor, some prophet come onto social media and says, God's going to bless you with a house. God's going to restore you. And you like and you comment and you amen and amen and amen. And they're the only one getting blessed because they're the ones that are making money from all these hundreds of thousands and millions of likes. And you're still there wondering, God, where is my blessing that the man of God promised me, that the woman of God promised me? He promised you, but really he was promising himself because what you did in your interaction with him blessed him, but no blessing was for you. So you were tricked, you were bamboozled. And so it's important for us to recognize the value of how we live and what we do. Selflessness is what brings blessing not selfishness come on can i say that again selflessness is what brings blessing not selfishness if all of our prayers is is about us and our family and what we need we will continue to struggle can i just i know nobody's gonna say amen to that but that's okay god is in that kind of mood this morning for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe accept and become like him giving because they love Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered do you think it's because he, 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 um, he was walking around being beaten or, or tortured and all those things no Jesus' sufferation was mainly travailing with men, travailing with people. He suffered by needing or having to give to people every single day. And they were ungrateful, disrespectful, dis discouraging. We very, we're very hard to sacrifice for. But God requires that we do anyway. He set this, the bar high. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That means giving of everything is your way to living. Giving your everything is your way of living. Jesus gave everything. His life. And right before our very eyes he was resurrected. Right before our very eyes, he was given a name that is above every name. Right before our very eyes, he was given power, dominion, authority over everything that exists and that which does not exist. Because he gave everything. I'm saying to you, don't miss these little nuggets. We've been trying to get something when God wants to give us everything. Oh, somebody got to hear that. Hallelujah. We've been reaching for something. I feel the presence and the anointing of God. We've been reaching and, 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 and studying and, and chasing after prophets and apostles and pastors. We've been trying to get something. Hallelujah. When God wants to give us everything. But you cannot get everything unless you're willing to give up everything. If you only give up something, you will only get something. But if you give up everything... You'll get everything. God is looking for some people who catch the vision, who recognize that he had to give up everything in order to gain everything. And therefore, we must be willing to give up everything. Can you give up everything of the world? Can I encourage somebody this morning? Can you give up anger, frustration, selfishness? Can you give up being annoyed when people don't do things the way you want it? 
can you give up being frustrated by people who who either beg too much or always want more than they deserve or want to 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 to, to take uh, you're serving food and this one person wants to take more than they deserve so somebody else doesn't get anything and you're annoyed because you're saying where is your where is your 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 compassion where is your understanding that other people need to get to and they get frustrated and annoyed and you you you, you get cross angry miserable you get upset and God is saying, come on, don't let that throw you off. Give up anger, give up frustration and live out of love. Give up everything that stops you from gaining everything. God wants us not to suffer. But it is not as men say. Praying alone will not get you what God has in store for you. Are you hearing me? Please listen. I'm not carrying you wide or astray. You may have heard. Sowing a seed will not get you what God has in store for you. Please listen to me. I'm not collecting any offering. I'm not sending out any cash up, any zeal or any of those numbers. I'm not trying to buy anything or beg you anything. I'm trying to give you something because God wants me to sacrifice everything that he has given me for you so that you can become who he desires for you to become your prayer your fasting your time in the word only helps you and prepares you to give up everything or oh, you didn't hear that listen to me again your fasting your prayer your time in the word is not what produces everything for you it is what prepares you to do what gives you everything. Jesus didn't fast and pray and read the word. He gave up everything. And because he gave up everything, everything came to him. Am I saying not to fast and pray and read the word? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying to you that that's not the ultimate because there are many people. Come on, you know some of them. Every single one of you that's listening to me right now know some Christians, know some people who have been fasting for years, who have been praying for years, who have been reading the word for years, and they are no way better than you who just start the other day. Their lives are not a reflection of prosperity and good success. So what happened? Is God a liar? Is God a liar? Come on. Can we just reason rationally and honestly and truthfully this morning? Can you just not be upset or not be distracted and just hear the voice of God saying to you, you, each and every one of us that is here this morning, know somebody, even one person, that boasts about how much they fast, how much they pray. Some of these people that you see are being taken out by God these days. Some of these people that you're hearing about things that they have done and the scandals and the, and the unveiling that is happening. They fasted and prayed for years, but they never sacrificed everything. They never sacrificed their lust. They never sacrificed pornography. They never sacrificed masturbation. They kept that back, but they fasted and prayed and read the word for years. But they got no deliverance because they, weren't, they were not willing to give up, to sacrifice everything. Husbands, you got to be willing to sacrifice lust. You said you want to get married and you want to have one woman because this is what God desires. You want to walk holy and upright, but every time you see a girl pass, you're looking. Every time you go to, to, to meditate, you're thinking about the, your ex-girlfriend, the sexy girl at church, whatever, whatever. And God is saying, you have not given up everything. And so I can't give you what you really need. Because if I give it to you in the midst of this thing that you have not given up, it will contaminate. It will become what dominates what I have given you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I know this is tough, guys, but you know, there are other days when the message is going to get nicer. Just hear me today because this is God. This was not what I planned. I'm saying to you, we must give up everything. We know ourselves. We know that we're too angry at the quickest bit. The slightest thing someone says, we get cross and angry. 
the slightest thing we do and say weird things things that are not of God in a moment in the twinkling of an eye oh I have to defend myself that's pride if you have to defend yourself that's pride give it up sacrifice it put it on the altar it's, this is the morning when we need to be repenting and saying God I still have too much of the world in me I still have too much of my old self I still have too much of my flesh yes I am better than I once was but there is still too much of me left and if there is too much of me then there is not enough of God come on somebody you should take note of that where there is too much of you where people are able to affect and touch you because dead man tell no tales dead flesh does not respond to touch if our flesh dies if we die to self if we die to greed and anger and selfishness and all the things that we used to um, support and, 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 and hold dear in the world if we die to those things when people do certain things to us we will not respond some of you want to get married and you don't realize that marriage is a test of how dead you are Marriage is a test of how dead you are, how much you have transformed from the way of self. Guys, I used to be an executive. I used to dress nice every day. I used to live in a two-bedroom apartment. From the day I started working, I never lived in a one-bedroom. I always wanted two-bedroom because I was so anal, so to speak. My place had to be speak and spam. My suits had to be in the guest bedroom closet because I couldn't make them crush up with the, with the jeans and the regular pants and shirts. Everything had to be neat and sweet. Nothing could be incomplete. But I didn't know that was pride. I thought everybody would say, wow, they even had a, they coined a phrase that I used to be one of the, one of the, the, um, the promoters of the marketing managers, managers for metrosexual. Every month end, my, me and my friend Lloydy, God rest his soul, passed away years ago. We used to go to, to, to Spa Estatique. I used to get facial, take me cute. Come on. Have women massaging my head with oil, rubbing up my head, massaging my scalp. Come on now. Massaging my body, pulling out blackheads, steaming my face, doing my nails. Nails look good. Toes look good. When we roll out, we have bumps. Roll out. 10-inch kicker speaker in the trunk. Power amplifier under the seat. Come on. I've been there. I've rolled. I have rolled. When I roll, roll up at the stoplight and the car pumping and jumping and hopping and the rap, every, every hot music coming out of my car and I'm playing it loud because I'm black and I'm proud. I've been there. I've done that think that I was something and everybody would admire and want to be like me who admires me today who wants to be like me today because now I'm not rolling as deep and so we have to know what are we giving up because what we give up in today's day is what people admire but if you have you have to give that up if you want to go higher if you want to meet God's desire you have to give up that which looks good on the ground that you might float hot air balloons cannot take off unless the weight that holds it on the ground is removed are you hearing me a plane cannot take off unless it applies more force more force to get it moving greater levels of force to reach the speed and greater levels of force to get to the higher the higher heights there is always a greater that you have to give up in order to accomplish great things higher things am i talking to somebody this morning what are you not giving up why you're still on the ground hot air balloon what thrust are you not applying while you're still at park 
Learjet 747 because it doesn't help to just be a plane if you can't fly. It doesn't help to be a hot air balloon if you can't take off. So you look good on the ground. Everybody's admiring. Have you ever been to the airport and see one of those fancy, expensive 60, 70 million dollar Learjet? Have you ever been to the dock and see one of those or see it on TV? Those yachts, those mega yachts, they call them. They look so beautiful. But if they're parked, there's a, a oligarch, a Russian oligarch who has a mega yacht that is parked in Antigua at the dock in Antigua. And it has not moved for over a year or two or maybe three. I don't know. It's been there for a long time. It's costing hundreds of millions of dollars just to be there. Hallelujah. But it can't move. You know why? Because... Because people says it can't move. So it looks good, but it is doing no good. The people who own it are not enjoying it. I'm saying to you, God owns us and he wants to enjoy us. He wants to enjoy us. But we got to give up that which connects us to Satan. Can I ask you to just make a commitment this morning? A covenant to give up that which holds you on the ground that which makes you a useless hot air balloon who goes into a hot air balloon and just stays on the ground standing looking around seeing what you always see touching what you've always touched who goes into an airplane and just sits down buckle their seat belt listen to the stewardess tell you some stuff and just sit there for two hours four hours and then come off the plane thinking that you're in new york it takes four hours from Jamaica to New York. You go in the plane and you buckle up and the stewardess, they walk down the aisle and give you a, 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 a soda and a chip, a bag of chips. And you come off the plane thinking that you're in New York, but you're still the same place because you did nothing different. Nothing was different. You gave up no fuel. Come on. You didn't unleash, unleash any weight. You didn't let off anything so you can't float. You can't go to the next level. People of God, hear me by the spirit of the living God. All these people that have been promising you blessings and house and car and, and, and husband and wife. When you still have so much weight, so much dirty sit down in you. In Jamaican parlance, so much dirty sit down in a yo. You've been saved for 10 years, but you have not been transformed because you're still cross. You're still angry. You're still gossiping. You're still slothful. You're still greedy. You're still selfish, but you've been saved for 10 years. Nobody knows the word like you. You're ready to criticize anybody who is not perfect in the word because you know word, but you have not been heard because you are just a nerd for word, but you are not saved. You have to give up everything. If you truly want to take off if you want to go higher you have to be in God's desire God's desire is not just for you to know word but to know the God of the word God desire is not just for you to pray 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 without ceasing his desire is for you to listen 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 as well God desire is not for you to just want his love but to give his love as well. And so I'm asking you this morning, as the Lord has unveiled, can we check ourselves? Can we check ourselves? Are we talking about people that are not doing the right thing? Instead of praying, about pe praying for people who are not doing the right thing. Are we talking about things that are not going right at our office? We're complaining to our co-workers, to our friends, to our pastors. Why, well, pastor, I don't like that job. My boss is this, my boss is that, my co-workers are this. They, they, them into witchcraft, them into all kinds of evil. My, they, they hate me. They're constantly doing things to me. They're putting powder on my desk. God, uh, my next door neighbor, my next door neighbor nasty. They don't wash them, oh, them stenches are always coming from over them house. We talk about things that are true. But that's not what should be coming from me and you. What we should be doing is talking to who can make a change. Who can rearrange. Who can make good that which looks strange. 
Come on, people. I know it's sometimes difficult when you're, when you're scrolling or when you come on and you hear this kind of message. This, ah, man, what am I to pastor? It's all right. I'll go find somebody else who is telling me what is going to spur me up. Who is, what's going to, what, what's going to make me feel good. Even though I'm, I've, I've not taken off. Somebody who will paint a picture that is, I, 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 I'm having a wonderful experience. I'm having a wonderful experience in a hot air balloon that is still on the ground. Oh, I'm having a wonderful experience. The stewardess is bringing chips and drink, so I'm good. I don't have to go to New York. I can just sit in the plane and waste time. Somebody is out there that will make you feel good about not accomplishing anything. Somebody out there will take your money for a space, for a seat in the hot air balloon, for a seat in the aeroplane, but not take you anywhere. Somebody out there will collect your tithe and offering every single day without pouring into you truth that will make you better. So there is always somebody that you can find. There is always another church you can go to that will not tell you that you need to love and walk in faith if you want to get to the place where you need to get to. Well, I'm going to tell you, even if only five people come on this live, that will be five people that I know will survive. I got to speak the truth, even when it affects me, even when it hurts me. And so come on, guys. For too many years, we've sat comfortably in a plane going nowhere. For too many years, we've sat in a hot air balloon looking at grass when we should be looking at the horizon. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. I like that. Hallelujah. We've sat in a plane on the ground when we should be looking from 35,000 feet. We should be seeing islands and seas and nations and continents. God wants more for us. But in order for him to give us more, we have to give more. I have this cup right here. I have already drank some of the water out of it. But in order to refill it, I have to drink all that is in it. In order to refill it, I have to drink all that is in it. We have to give up everything that is in us. Every single thing that is in us, we have to give it up in order to be filled up. Like my cup. And so we have to allow people to take a sup. And so when people make you angry, when people make you angry by what you are by, by what they do, all that is happening is that they are emptying anger out of you. Or oh, somebody you no know, that you should bring an offering for. When someone sends you a pornography um a picture on your on your on your um on your WhatsApp or on your on, on your Instagram or Facebook or whatever, when they send you a, a, a thing, don't get upset, don't get cross and angry and, and complain. Pray for them. But if someone sends you something that affects you in your soul, if someone sends you a picture or a video and that video is stuck in your head and it causes you to start desiring that or going after that, then it is God that allows it to let you know that you were living a lie. That lust, come on, was deep in your heart, but something had to trigger it. And God wants it to be triggered before he has elevated you. He wants your desire for the things that are evil to be triggered and to be delivered before he lifts you up in the air. So we must give up that which is weighing us down. Put lust on the altar. Put masturbation on the altar. Put sexual immorality on the altar. Put gossip on the altar. Put greed, slothfulness on the altar. Put rejection, hurt, pain, pride, fear on the altar. And say, Lord, I've seen these things operating in my life, masquerading as I have to defend myself. I'm not letting anybody walk over me. I'm not letting anybody use me. That's fear and pride. Jesus gave up everything and we used him. You used him. I used him. We use him every day. And we say, Lord, forgive me. And then tomorrow the same thing. Lord, forgive me. 
tomorrow the same thing lord forgive me but when someone does that to us and say forgive me no no you did it yesterday you did that same thing yesterday you now learn you take me for fool you take me for idiot you think i'm stupid or something i'm not no no i'm not even dealing with you again because you're disrespectful you take me for an idiot but five minutes later you walk away and you're before god saying lord i'm sorry i just lost it i just watched porn i just masturbated i just told a lie i just stole something and the lord says but you did that yesterday you did that last week you did that last month you've been doing that for a year you've been doing that for 10 years and i've been forgiving you but you got a chance to forgive someone else to give out of what i've been giving you to someone else and you you, you, you put a limit on it they did it two times and that was your limit so you cut them off but you want me to continue with you for years some people right now should be in tears we've been living out of our fears and not out of our cares we must live out of our, out of our compassion see every opportunity that comes under the guise of frustration and anger as an opportunity to give up that which is holding you down so that you can float and be at the place where God's truth is. Stop being frustrated by your co-workers, by people in church. One of the most disgusting things is when people talk about who me, I'm not going to no church because I appear hypocrite their church. Oh, you're perfect. Oh, go Miss Perfect. Go Mr. Perfect. I'm not trusting no pastor again because a pastor hurt me. Oh, okay. So that means anything that you are, if you're a woman, nobody should want to talk to you or marry you or do anything good for you because some woman have hurt every single man that you see. I don't want no man I don't want to have nothing to do with no man again in the voice of, in, in the best female voice because a man hurt me when I was 16 my boyfriend was supposed to come to my sweet 16 party and he left with my best friend and so after that I give up on men how many men's heart have you broken have you been with every single man that God created that you know that all men are dogs all men evil no you are evil you are evil because you are calling that which God has blessed unclean because one satanic plant in your life has done you wrong one pastor has done you wrong and you're right off all pastors including those you don't even know one man has done you wrong and you're right off all man including those who are waiting to be a blessing to you one woman has broken your heart taken your money you send her to school she graduated and now she's gone with a doctor because you sacrificed your education to send her and she's gone and not treating nobody good again no woman may not send to school no woman i'm not gonna help to, to, to be better because they're all like that the devil is a liar the devil is a liar if god were to treat us like that all mankind would be destroyed Stop letting Satan dictate how we think about people, places, and things. Let us press towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us press towards forgiveness, love, joy, peace, temperance. Let us think on the things that are good, of good report, pure, righteous, holy at all times. Let us give of ourselves. Give up everything that we can gain everything. If you only give up something, you will only get something. I have drank, I wish I could show you, um, my, the, the, what I've drank out of this cup of warm water is just down here. So majority of the cup is full. But if that's where I stop, if that's where I stop, what i was hoping to get from the entire cup i will only get a small portion because i only utilize a small portion 
people of God, if you give God only a small portion of you and you leave the rest, if the majority of you is still of the world, you will only get a small portion of God's blessing, of God's presence, of God's will, of God's purpose. You have to give up everything, all of you. God does not share space with Lucifer. God doesn't have Lucifer as a tenant in his house. And we shouldn't either. Do you have Lucifer as a tenant in your house? The house of your life? Do you have the Holy Spirit taking up the biggest room but Lucifer in the garage? Is Lucifer in your guest bedroom? Is Lucifer in the in the in the in the um the helpers quarters oh he's not in the main house lucifer is not in the main house he's in the helpers quarters the helpers quarters has a passageway that connects to the main house as soon as the door open take out the garbage lucifer can come in because he lives on the property therefore he has access where does lucifer live is he in your community because if he's in your community, he will drive past your gate until one day you forget to lock the door by how you think and what you say and what you do. And the moment you forget and do something that is representative of him, he will come in and he will destroy that which God has built. Please, my brothers and sisters, people of God, Today has been a different day, a different morning, a different devotion. But I believe that if you pay keen attention, if you didn't set your mind and your expectations about what you are going to receive, you would have received more today than you have received even when I just pray for you. Because today I'm encouraging you to give everything. Give up everything on the altar so that God can give to you what he's given to so many others what he desires to give to you give up the frustration over how your son is behaving over how your daughter is behaving over how your husband is behaving over how your wife is behaving give up that and just say lord i thank you for the opportunity to serve one who does not know that they should give up that which caused them problems thank you for the honor of teaching others how to give up everything that they too can gain everything. But we will never look at life that way or people that way unless we ourselves give up everything. Give up everything. This morning's devotion is called Give Up Everything to Gain Everything. Because if you still have something, then that's a space that nothing else can go in. Give up everything to gain everything. Or if you give up something, you will only gain something. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word of encouragement this morning. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that it has been received in the way that it was meant to be give, that, that it was given and the way it was meant to be received. I thank you that fertile soil has been nurtured, has been uh, 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 preciously prepared, has been nourished, and seeds have been planted today, seeds that will bear fruit, seeds that will bring forth and have a harvest. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your people this morning. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for transformation. I thank you for the ability to see ourselves that we might repent and turn. Lord, I pray that you will bless each person that has heard my voice this morning, that they will come to that place of recognizing, Lord, if there are things in me that I don't know, that I have not recognized, that I have not accepted as being bad or being wrong, I give it to you this morning, God. I do not want to be held down. I do not want to be held on the ground when I should be soaring. I do not want to be in one place when I should be touring. I do not want to be up and down, walking around, 
tired, broke, busted, and disgusted when I should easily be in my nice, comfortable bed snoring. Oh Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask you this morning to take every burden, every weight, every frustration, every annoyance, every cross, angry, miserable spirit from your people. Lift them this morning, O oh God Almighty. Lift those things that are, are secretly hiding in corners and crevices of our lives. Remove gossip from our lives, masquerading as talking truth about situations and people. Remove, O oh God Almighty, slothfulness, laziness, greed that is stopping us from succeeding. Remove everything, O oh God, that is a burden, that is a weight, and give us your burden that is light and your yoke that is easy, that we might flourish and prosper, be an example to our families. Cover us under your wings, O oh God Almighty, and shield us from the things that wants to easily beset us and destroy us. But reveal and expose the things to us that will empty us, that we might become, that we might be holy and acceptable unto thee. I pray for your people this morning, O God, that your spirit will be upon us, in us, and flow through us as the spirit of wisdom and understanding, as the spirit of counsel and might, as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. May your glory fall afresh upon us, O God, that we might be as Moses in the cleft of the rock, seeing the backside of your glory, and changing our story. Father, visit us like you did Saul and Damascus Road that we might arise from our blindness and step into the fullness of your apostleship, your call, your anointing, and your purpose. Father, may we look to you as Elisha looked to Elijah as he's being taken up to see where our mantle will fall from. And may we utilize it to part Jordan rivers of problems and to raise axe heads that are difficult problems, fix axe head problems that are difficult for people. Father, may your gift of discernment, submission, humility, love, selflessness be imparted to your people this morning. Lord, May we all come to that place where we give up everything that represents our lives, our name, our family, inheritance, our DNA, our generational connection, and be connected to you, your DNA, your life, your generational connection, that we might truly live at the highest place where you desire for us to live. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Guys, oh, wow. The Holy Spirit just remind me, today is our new beginning. For those who took the challenge last Wednesday, the seven-day challenge, today is our new beginning. And this is why God was saying, in this new beginning, I believe, I sense the Lord saying, in this new beginning, we must give up all the things that we, we were holding on to. Everything that was not meeting the standard of Jesus. Everything that was not a reflection of his character and nature. We need to give it up so that we can truly walk in the new beginning. It makes no sense for us to have spent seven days praying night and day reading the word night and day and know that God wants to give us a sash that says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and a crown, a royal diadem. He wants to put a medal around our necks but we have to give up everything. We would have to have learned what the word says, heard what he said in prayer so that today we can begin to walk, run, Drive, ride, fly, soar, and much more because we gave up everything. You will no longer be poor if you gave up all. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's be expectant. Let's be expectant of what God will do for you in this new beginning. Today is the day of new beginning. Father, we receive your new beginning. We receive your new beginning. Lord, if there be anything in me that needs to give up, any fear, any doubt, any unbelief, any evil concupiscence, anything, O God Almighty, that is not according to your will and purpose, anything that Satan can come and say, I see that in Rowan and it belongs to me, anything in me, God Almighty, that connects me to Lucifer, any part of my compound that he's on, I give him eviction notice this morning. I evict Satan from my outhouse, from my helper's quarters. I evict Satan from my guest bedroom. I say, Satan, you got to go. Come out of my guest bedroom this morning. Come out of my bedroom. Come out from under my bed. Come out from my closet. Come out from my bathroom. Come out, Lucifer. And your demons. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave my house. This house belongs to Jesus. Yato Shepakatasa. Come on, chase him out, people of God. Chase him out. Don't be pompous and prideful about that. Satan don't have no place in my life. The devil is a liar. The fact that you say that with such pride means that Satan is hiding behind you. And every time you turn, you can't see him because he's exactly behind you. And so you think all is well. But Satan is so neatly, neatly, look at this. You see one hand. But really, there is two. Satan is so neatly tucked in behind some of us. So neatly placed behind some of us. Hiding in a painting in our house. And we're walking around thinking we're the cat's pajama. Oh, I'm a child of God. I'm a mighty woman of God. Mighty man of God. Yeah. And that's exactly where Satan is hiding. In your declaring how mighty you are. When all you are is a vessel. For a mighty God. No man is mighty. Only our God is mighty. In and to us. And so if you're walking around. Or you hear people talking about. Oh I'm a mighty man of God. And people telling people that they're a mighty man of God. And they feel good. And they're floating on cloud nine. That Satan neatly tucked in. Behind them. Riding them like a horse. Riding us like a horse and a jockey. Getting to his destination instead of God's destination. God is the only one that is mighty and almighty. We're just vessels. This cup holds water that has great value to my body, to my intestines. Warm water every morning on an empty stomach helps your intestines. But it is the water, it is the water that has the value, not the cup. I can always find something else to put the water in, but I can't find a replacement for the water. God can always find another Rowan. When I was, when I could hardly see or do anything, God found another Fort Watch family member to carry on the devotion. Pastor Marsha, thanks be to God. I thank her for her time of service. But God can always find someone else. But we cannot find another God. Amen. So let's be mindful and careful. That we don't give credence to the cup. When it should be the water. Because it's the water that gives us life. It's the water that heals us. It's the water that delivers us. The cup is just a vessel. The cup is not mighty because it has the water. But the water is mighty even in the cup. Woo! Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Whether it's in the cup or in a glass or in a bottle, in the fridge or in the, in the five-gallon container, the water is mighty regardless of where it is. But the containers are not. Amen. Praise God. Just a little coming down from the high place of pride in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us have our communion. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you 
for your goodness and mercy towards us. Thank you for your word that has hit our spirit, our soul. Thank you for that, that, that awakening that you have given us. Thank you for the opportunity to repent and turn from our evil ways that was more purporting in ignorance than deliberate. But thank you, Lord, that you reveal that you might heal and that the devil might squeal and that we might now feel that you are for real. In the name of Jesus Christ, sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now, O God. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success. May they be, O God Almighty, a representation of our faith and our love for you as you lost your body and your blood as an example of your faith and love for us. We eat in remembrance of your sacrifice. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup. And he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, I need your help. I hope somebody was listening clearly. I said this morning, uh, there was a name that I gave to... to um, to the devotion i said this morning's devotion is called something and i, I and i um i did a two-part naming but because i was flowing in the spirit i can't remember what i said please if somebody remember what i said this devotion this morning's devotion is named please send it to me so i can um put it as a title when i'm uploading to to, to youtube i hope you are paying attention and somebody heard i said this morning's devotion is called something but I, I, I can't remember because it wasn't me. It was in the spirit. And so I hope somebody heard and was listening and can write it for me or WhatsApp it to me or something. Please, please, please. I don't want to forget it because I just realized that I need to name this morning's devotion. And I can't remember what the Holy Spirit had said that it's supposed to be named. And so please, if you remember, I said this morning's devotion is called so-and-so. Um, uh, so please. Um, see if you can remember and let me know okay god bless you hallelujah raise your hands for the blessing and now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of jesus christ of nazareth go forth family and have an amazing day god's way for our god has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way in jesus name remember jesus love you and we love the world i honor to hallelujah 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 thank you i see somebody just posted it a while ago hallelujah bless jesus hallelujah give up everything to gain everything let me just write it down quickly give hallelujah up everything hallelujah Yes. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you guys. Hallelujah. It's been a pleasure serving you this morning. I hope that you were blessed and I hope that the, the, the presence of God touched you and that you receive something that will make your day, your week, your year and your life and family so much better. Unload that you can reload and go places and see faces amen hallelujah 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 on behalf of pastor marsha wade i'm ruan wade saying have a fantastic day god's way please remember to do something good for someone today because jesus set the example he went about doing good an example of one uh, 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 the, the one who does good is an example of one who has given up everything sacrificing for others is an example of one 
who has given up everything. That's what Jesus did. And that's what he expects of us. God bless you all. Love you guys. Have a good one. Remember, please continue to pray for the team that is in um, Nigeria. They have ministry um, assignment, appointment, Saturday coming again. And so while they're having a good time as well, because you must have a good time while you're ministering, they still have to be covered in prayer so that when they, until they complete their assignment and have returned home. And so Father, just cover them even now. Bless them, guard and keep them, download into them that they might give out of what you have put in them to others in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you guys. Love and all. Bye. See y'all tomorrow, same time, same place. God willing. Be blessed. You are great.